Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very nice problem from a book called 101 Problems in Algebra. Here's what the book looks like. Unfortunately, currently it's unavailable on Amazon. I'm pretty much, I'm pretty sure you can find it uh, from other sources. If you live in the United States and if you don't, you could probably find a copy, maybe a used copy. Anyways, this is a really nice problem that has been used uh, for the training of the USA IMO team. IMO is the International Math Olympiad, as you should know, which is a nine-hour test, just like the USAMO. Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at this problem and see how we can solve it. So we have this equation, x over x minus 1 squared plus x over, by the way, I apologize, the first one should be a plus sign x over x plus 1 squared plus x over x minus 1 squared equals m squared plus m. So to solve this problem, we're going to go ahead and use an identity, which is uh, something that looks like this. So a squared plus b squared can be written as a plus b quantity squared, and then we subtract the term in the middle. You should be familiar with this if you're studying algebra, right? Now, by using this identity, and of course I want to call this a and I want to call this b, so that I can apply my identity. It, here's what it's going to look like. x over this expression right here is going to turn into x over x plus 1. That is going to be x uh, a plus b first. So I'm going to go ahead and add those two quantities. And then we're going to square it. And then from this, we're going to subtract 2 times a b, which is going to be 2 times x over x plus 1 times x over x minus 1. Great. Now, what does this turn into? And obviously, since it's the same thing, it's going to equal m squared plus m. By the way, in this case, m is a given number, which we usually call a parameter. So when you change the values of m, the solutions are going to change. In other words, you get a family of solutions. That's what the parameter means. Okay. Now, if you go ahead and make a common denominator, x times x minus 1, x times x plus 1, x squared plus x minus x, the x is going to cancel out. You're going to get 2x squared. And at the bottom, the common denominator is going to be the product of these two things, which is going to give you x squared minus 1 from difference of two squares. Make sense? And of course, we need to square this thing. And then from that, we're going to subtract. x times x is x squared, and we're going to be getting the exact same thing, but this is not squared. Make sense? That's what's beautiful about this problem, because by doing this, by using this identity, we're able to turn it into something more meaningful or maybe something that is easier to handle okay at this point you know what's calling substitution right my favorite method so if i call this something how about w right <laughs> i don't know why w but i guess you could call it oh by the way in the original uh, book i think the original problem statement uses z and but i didn't want to use z because i usually use z with complex numbers anyways that's a different story. Now we get the following equation by changing this. W squared minus W equals M squared plus M. Now this is a pretty interesting equation because there's like, what? There are two variables. W wait a minute. M is not a variable. It's a variable, but it's not a variable. What does that mean? It's just a given number. Think of it as M equals some value that you don't know, right? Let's say M equals 5. Now how would you solve it, right? Treat it as a constant for now. So there's a couple of ways to go about it. I believe there are three ways to go about it. I'm thinking uh, I just thought of a third method right now, uh, and it will be the following. Uh, first method would be the quadratic formula. OK, let's call that QF. The quadratic formula is as follows. Obviously, you want this to be quadratic in W because that's our variable. And now if you solve it, you're going to get negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1, minus, minus, minus is going to turn into a plus, 4 times this. And something pretty interesting is going to happen under the radical, because when you expand it, you're going to get 4m squared plus 4m plus 1. And then if you have seen this before, hopefully you did. And if not, you should definitely recognize these things if you're doing algebra for any reason. This is a perfect square, and that's just perfect, right? Did you recognize it? So this is 2m plus 1 squared. That's why this problem was specifically arranged for competitions. You know, it's been used in the training. And this is an easy problem, obviously an introductory problem, right? <laughs> it's not a hard problem. So 
what do we do? Uh, we take the square root and that gives us with the plus minus sign v that considers both solutions. And now we can go ahead and split it up into two cases. Uh, w1 is going to be the plus sign, let's just say. And then if you simplify this, uh, you're going to get m plus 1. And the second root is just going to be obtained by 1 minus 2m minus 1 divided by 2. And the 1 is going to cancel out and you're going to end up with negative m. Interesting. So we got the w values in terms of m, which is our given number or parameter. And then we can go back substitute, right? What is w? Uh, w is uh, that gigantic quadratic ratio thing, right? So 2x squared divided by x squared minus 1 is w. So this is either m plus 1 or negative m. Let's go ahead and look at each case. And then we're going to be solving for x in this scenario, right? So our goal is to basically solve for x. Remember that. Always keep that in um, perspective. And if you cross multiply and do that in a meaningful way, like just distribute the m plus 1 over x squared and 1 so that you can keep the coefficient of x squared together. And then when you bring the 2 over here and put that guy on the other side, you're going to get a picture like this. m minus 1 because 1 minus 2 is negative 1 equals m plus 1. And then you can basically divide both sides by m minus 1. You don't want m to be 1, obviously. That's uh, naturally uh, followed. And with the square roots, you can get that. Obviously, uh, having real solutions depend on the values uh, inside the radical. It has to be greater than or equal to 0, right? So you can look at that. What happens in the case of uh, complex solutions? Obviously, uh, you can kind of revert or invert the uh, radical to something like this. Let's say you have a no negative number inside. Let's just say negative a. And let's say a is positive. You can basically write this as square root of a, a multiplied by i. And of course, uh, you, uh, you have the plus minus sign, so that will take care of both roots. Okay? Make sense? Uh, now let's go ahead and proceed with the other solution, and that's going to be like this, uh, probably a little simpler, I would say. And uh, now this gives us m plus 2 x squared equals m, and from here x squared is going to be m over m plus 2. And just like before, you're going to get the radical or the square root with the plus minus sign, and this is going to be the solutions, right? Cool, cool. Now, so that gave us the solutions using the quadratic formula, right? But is there another way to do it? Obviously, there's two more ways. So let's go ahead and take a look at those and see what happens because those are really, really cool methods. All right. So let me go ahead and show you the second method. The second method is kind of nice uh, because, uh, I don't know, it's just nice. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> so have you noticed that uh, both sides are factorable? But when you factor them, you hopefully notice something interesting that the factors are consecutive, but in a different way. What do I mean by that? We have a, some number and then times one less than the number, and then we have a number m and then one more than the number. That's why they're consecutive, but uh, in a different way. So we're going to go ahead and match them up. So in other words, uh, w minus 1 is the smaller number on the left, and on the right, uh, the smaller number is m. So these two will correspond to each other, and these two will correspond to each other. Make sense? And since they are one apart, it'll work. So in other words, w equals m plus 1 is a solution. But wait a minute. This is quadratic, and we got two solutions. Where is the other one? Hmm. The other one is hidden, like kind of buried deep in a mathematical chest. So you kind of have to look at it very differently. And this is what is beautiful about math. Not, not the only reason, obviously. Math is just you know amazingly beautiful indescribably beautiful but this is just one of them just a tiny bit right so we're going to invert both of these numbers or negate i'm going to write it like this negative m minus one multiplied by negative m and those numbers are also consecutive right but this time the correspondences will be a little different so we can kind of uh, match them up like this What's the smaller number? W minus 1. What's the smallest number? W negative m minus 1. So this is how they match up. Make sense? Or like this. And obviously from here you can hopefully see that W is equal to negative m real quick, right? So those are going to be two solutions. And guess what? They just match up with the solutions that we found before for W, of course. And now from here you can go to the x values exactly the same way. But let's go ahead and quickly look at the third method because I just thought about it. Initially, I didn't have an idea that this would work. 
but let's go ahead and take a look at that, that one as well. So I'm going to put everything on the same side. So let's go ahead and bring these in and then set it equal to zero. I noticed that uh, this is factorable by difference of two squares. And then of course with a negative one, this is going to be W plus M. And from here we get a beautiful result. Of course, uh, math is always beautiful, right? <laughs> Sometimes it can get a little, you know, um, difficult to deal with, but it's always beautiful. So what does this tell you? This tells you two things. Either W plus M is equal to zero, which implies W is equal to negative M, or W minus M minus one is equal to zero, which implies W equals M plus one as before. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.